This past weekend, I was at the Free Thinking Film Festival here in Ottawa, speaking on a, a panel after a documentary on CBC. The man you're about to meet was also there, Majid El Shafi. He was there showing a film about his story. It's called Freedom Fighter. And before we bring Majid on, we want to show you a little bit of his story, which includes torture in his native Egypt. Torture section, that's what they call it, torture section. Officers that they are torturing you, they are always wearing masks. So you cannot see their faces. And they never call each other by names, they call each other by numbers. Uh, they bury me with, with uh, cigarettes. Um, they beat me very hard. They pulled my nails um, of my right feet. Um, I couldn't move. That's what I remember. I couldn't move, so they carry me to my cell. And the only thing that I can really remember in day number two was the taste and the smell of my blood. A powerful story from a powerful man, and you will meet him now, Majid El Shafi. Um, Majid, what I didn't tell the viewers is why you were tortured, why you were burned with cigarette butts, why you had your nails pulled out, and why you were beaten. Uh, it's so, you know, some people might think you must have done horrible things to deserve that, but it's much simpler and much more frightening than that. I just believed in freedom of religion. I just converted from Islam to Christianity. And it's not a matter of debate of religion, it's a matter of freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in our world today, uh, there is one persecuted Christian uh, every three minutes worldwide. Over uh, last year, over 165,000 Christians was killed for their faith. Between 200 to 300 million persecuted Christians worldwide, 75 to 80 percent of them in the Muslim countries, and the rest is in countries like China, North Korea, uh, communist countries, and India as well. And this is the fact on the on the ground. Uh, we're seeing some of this now as we we watch the Arab Spring. We'll get to that a little later. But with the the Coptic churches being under attack. Um, I remember when I was a weekend news editor uh, at a radio station, there were regularly stories that I have to write up of uh, gunmen in motorcycles bursting into a church in Pakistan, and they would shoot the place up. This doesn't get a huge amount of attention, though. Why? Uh, I, I'm asking myself the same question, and I, I'm assuming because we are a country, we become more concerned about being politically correct than being correct. And this is the problem that we're facing. Uh, the problem with the Canadian society today that we don't want to take sides. We do not want to say, well, this group persecuted because that's other group persecuting them. We're scared to offend the other group or to offend the Muslim community. Well, our problem is not really with the Muslim people, it's with the extremists mm -hmm. of, of, of this religion. And if you ask me, the worst dilemma that facing Islam as a faith today is not the rising of the extremists, is the silent of the moderate Muslims. Why are you silent? Don't tell me they hijacked my religion. Well, why did you let them? That's a good question. Now, you also defend Muslims that are persecuted as well. Absolutely. You, you formed a group called One Free World International? That's correct. Okay. And you go around the world and you deal with this. You've testified before commons committees here on parliament mm. uh, you've gone around the world to to uh, spread the idea of freedom of religion and Muslims are persecuted as well in places like China uh, and, and you Uyghurs. speak up for them yes absolutely we speak for the Falun Gong for the Uyghurs which is the Muslims in China Baha'i Ahmadiyya's uh, any group that will be facing persecution because their beliefs will stand with them however the persecution that we are facing today with the Christians, you see any, any of these groups, you can talk about them, media will listen, mm. people will listen. When, you come, when it comes to the persecution that's happening to the Christians, which is the most persecuted groups around the world, everybody's silent. Well, I, I always found it amazing the number of stories that you'd see about one pastor in the United States who threatened to burn the Koran. I think he eventually did, but when he had threatened Florida. to, mm. world leaders were standing up and saying, don't do this. The same didn't happen as people were being shot and killed for being Christians in other countries. 
Is that part of the same uh, fear of political correctness? And if so, what do you do about it when the political leaders are afraid to say anything? Well, you, you don't elect them. You don't vote for them. It's as simple as that. Yes, it is part of, of, the, of the politically correctness uh, movement what, that we're seeing in our society today. However, the, like, even the, 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 the problem with the political level, even right now our Canadian government is building the Freedom of Religion Office. Mm -hmm. This is just something brand new that building, and, and I want to thank our government for doing that. However, do you really believe for a second that this office will stand up for China? Listen, this office will be great when it comes to Iraq, Egypt, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all the countries that is easy to confront them. But, but not China. Not China, no. I, I, the State Department in the U.S. has something similar, and I think that Hillary Clinton actually does, but I don't know that our government will have the strength to do that. We're going to come back more with uh, Rajid al Shafi in a moment, including the story of a man behind the Egyptian uprising now behind bars, and Faith may have a part to play in that as well. We'll be back. Between 200 to 300 million persecuted Christians in our world today, and nobody mentioned anything. He, he can speak about the persecution of any other minority, and the media will listen, the people will listen, but when you come to the persecuted Christians, nobody will listen. Uh, that is another clip from uh, the movie Freedom Fighter documentary about our guest, Majid al Shafi. He converted from Islam to Christianity in his native Egypt, had to escape, flee to Israel, now lives in Canada where he fights for religious freedom. Um, we watched the Arab Spring, and we mentioned this in the last segment, we want to bring it back. We watched the Arab Spring start uh, and spread to countries like Egypt, and I'm sure you must have been hopeful things might go well. I was al always had reservations. But since then, we've seen the burning of Coptic churches, um, a, a rise of... Um, not a takeover, but a rise of militant Islam. And we've seen people like uh, Ab uh, Ala Abdel Fattah, one of the bloggers at the forefront of, uh, of the Tahrir Square movement, thrown in jail because he dared criticize the military. Um, how do you feel about what's happening in the Arab Spring right now? Is it still a spring? I know seasons have changed, we're in fall, but is it still a spring-like movement, an awakening of democracy, or are you worried? I I don't know who wake up in the morning and called it Arab Spring. I really don't know. I'm, I'm really trying to track it down who did it. And I believe that Obama administration is, was the first that called it Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. What they called it Arab Spring is what we call it the deadly winter for the minorities. Uh, first of all, I wish that the West can wake up to understand that you cannot build democracy between day and night. You can't do this. The way that we have democracy here, it will not happen. Is the dictatorship have to go? Is Mubarak have to leave? If we are just talking about Egypt for a second yeah. here. Yes, Mubarak have to go. He's a dictatorship. He killed a lot of innocent people. I agree. But after 30-something years, when you take some, somebody like this, you create a political vacuum that the Muslims extremists, like Muslim Brotherhood or the Salafiyin, will use it to control the country, and it will make it worse to the minority and to Israel, for example, their neighbor, and the ones well, that they have we, a We saw agreement. this in Iraq. Uh, yes. Even with the Americans in, Iraqi Christians have had to flee. This is a 2,000-year-old mm. community, the Chaldeans. They have had to flee. Uh, many of them settling here in Canada because it's just not safe anymore. Do you think that will happen with Coptic Christians and other Christians in Egypt where they've been since the beginning of Christianity? Absolutely. I was just in Iraq two months ago and I met with the Prime Minister and all the Iraqi government. The problem that we are facing right now that you cannot have democracy between day and night and we hope that we understand this. When it comes to the Egyptian society, for example, you have 30 to 40 percent of the Egyptians is illiterate. They don't know how to read and write their own name. Mm -hmm. How they can vote on a constitution they cannot read? You have to educate them first before you give them freedom of vote or something. You can change the, you can reform the constitution. You can allow free media. You can take democracy steps by steps. But this will not happen between day and night. And without education democracy dies. So it's going to be a long time before we see anything we recognize as democracy in Egypt. If we did. If we do at all. Uh, your thoughts on, on how things will play out for the cops and other uh, religious minorities in uh, your homeland over the coming years? 
uh, the evidence showed that there is uh, uh, 11 attacks up to now since the January 25 re revolution uh, against the Coptic Egyptians. Uh, 11 attacks that we are aware of, mm -hmm. or the media was big enough that the media was aware of. Ended by the October 9, the massacre of Maspiro, that the, ta the armed vehicles run over the people and, and kill them. So I think it will get much worse before it gets better if, if it do. Yeah, and that will be sad. Some of the uh, earliest um, sites of Christian uh, history Absolutely. In, uh, in your country. Uh, well, in your homeland. Canada is your country Absolutely. now. And thank you very much for sticking up it's for religious pleasure. freedom and pushing it around the world. Thank you, sir.